<laughs> hey guys, I'm Dean from Always Europe, and here I have the LG G8 Thank You. The G8 Thank You is the successor to the G7 Thank You. However, this phone feels like a small upgrade instead of a whole new product. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I did like the LG G8 Thank You, however I wish LG had given it a better design instead of so many gimmicks. In the hand, the G8 feels solid and impressively it lacks a camera bump. The design makes the phone completely smooth from front to the back, which is an awesome feat and one of the best things about the device. The phone doesn't have a curved display like the P30 Pro or the S10 Plus, but its bezel is contour around the phone's border. These bezels cause a less immersive viewing experience, yet they help prevent accidentally touching the edge of the screen. There is a 6.1 OLED display with a stunning 3120 by 1440 pixel resolution. This is a welcome step up to the LG G7's LCD display. Like its predecessor, the G8 Thank You also has HDR10, which makes for a great viewing experience. To complement the phone's great screen, LG has also added powerful speakers that provide a detailed sound and a great bass. The sound gets a smidge boxy when playing the phone's audio with a deep bass. However, this only happens at higher volumes. The G8 features DTX 3D surround sound, which helps distinguish audio when you're watching content that supports it. Although it's at its best when you're wearing headphones, like the G7, the G8 has a boombox speaker that vibrates the surface the phone's sitting on to help it amplify its sound. What's weird is that the G7 is actually louder than the G8, so everything that the G8 sound does, the G7 does louder. Not necessarily better, but for sure louder. The phone lacks an earpiece speaker, however LG has added a crystal sound OLED display. This vibrates the phone's display to create sound. It works well. Alright, now we have to talk about the phone's large but feature packed notch. While it's not as big as the iPhone XS or the Pixel 3 XLs, some people might think it looks outdated. I disagree because it serves a purpose. In the G8, LG uses a time of flight sensor to implement some cool features which make up for its size. First off, it sends infrared waves to map the user's face. This allows for an iPhone level of facial recognition that works better than the typical Androids, it's more secure, and even works at night. The sensor also helps separate the G8 from its competitors by adding two unique features called Hand ID and Air Motion. Hand ID uses the sensor to read the veins in your palm to unlock your phone. While it's safer than a fingerprint scanner, it's much less consistent. That's not to say that Hand ID doesn't work. When I first got the phone, I was finding issues where I could only get Hand ID to work about 2 out of 10 times. However, after LG sent me a tutorial video, I was able to get the feature to work more like 7 out of 10 times. Since it didn't work all the time, it made me want to just pick up the phone and use the regular fingerprint sensor or use facial ID. Air motion is the same thing. This feature lets you set shortcuts to two apps plus a few other things. How it works is when you raise your hand over the notch, you can swipe right or left depending on which app you want to open. I'm finding a lot more success at using this functionality as well after watching a tutorial video. Though on occasion, it's still a lot easier to pick up my phone. I found that Air Motion worked more consistently than Hand ID. However, it still wasn't perfect. Since the features didn't work all the time, it felt like more of a gimmick than something that would make me want to run to the store and buy this phone or making my life any easier. Camera eyes, I found the G8's dual rear facing shooters a little lackluster. Its standard camera is 12 megapixels and beside it there is a 16 megapixel ultra wide shooter without autofocus. The pictures I took look great and retain color well, but when you zoom in you'll realize they're not very sharp. This is amusing since a couple years ago I found that LG smartphones would over sharpen my photos. The phone's selfie camera overexposes the background and even with the time of flight sensor, I find that portrait shots don't create a pleasing sense of depth. Overall, the cameras are okay, but there are better options in the market. The LG G8 has a 3500 milliamp battery that I haven't been able to squeeze more than six hours of screen time on it. That seems a little underwhelming since I'm not very much of an aggressive user. The G8 uses the Snapdragon 855 chipset with six gigabytes of RAM. I found that the phone ran well with no issues and moved quick and smooth. I like how the G8 looks and although LG could have made the design a bit more abstract, it was safe and I wouldn't fault them for that. And while Air Motion and Hand ID isn't 100% the greatest, it shouldn't detract you from purchasing the phone. Overall, I found myself a bit disappointed with the G8 Thank You, especially in comparison to other smartphones that came out this year. 
the G8 ThinQ is not a bad phone by any means. However, it's nothing to run home about either. The LG G8 ThinQ is now available in carriers all around Canada. And if you like this review, please click like and subscribe at the bottom and you can read more about this phone on mobilesyrup.com.